Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here, and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. Imagine for a moment, let me take you back in time. World War II was blazing. You want to enlist, you're an 18-year-old boy, you go down to enlist in the Marines, but they tell you you're too short. You get a job with Western Union. You think you're delivering happy notices, and you are. You're delivering a lot of happy, joyful messages, but you also find out that you are the one that delivers that telegram that tells a mom and a dad that their son has been killed in conflict. You're the one that stands there and watches as a mom falls to her knees. What impression would that make for you? And what difference would that make going forward in the future? Well, let's look, at, let's look a little, little further in the future. The Marines changed their rules. They allowed people, they lowered the limit to be able to come in and he immediately enlisted. He was sent to Iwo Jima after training. Now, Iwo Jima was, I remember Iwo Jima by the flag that they hosted. You've seen the statue. You've seen the pictures of the Marines leaning that, leaning, tilting that flag up, all leaning against each other as they struggle to get it up there. It looks like that's the victory flag. The, the flight, the battle wasn't over there. The Japanese held back. They had cement pillboxes lined with machine guns inside of it. And as the Americans, they waited for them to all get on shore. And then as they did that, then they unleashed uh, bullets everywhere, mowing down our Marines. Over 6,000 of them killed on the spot. Now this 18-year-old boy, his name was Woody Williams. And Woody Williams carried a, a flamethrower. And his commander came to him and said, Do you think you can get up on top of those pillboxes? And didn't know. He was scared to death. Bullets were actually ricocheting off of the flamethrower. But he came up there, crawled on top of it. And he was able to successfully, successfully destroy several of those heavily guarded machine gun pillboxes. And he was awarded the Medal of Honor by the President of the United States, President Truman. But his service to his country and his gallantry did not end there. He's now 97 years old and he is the last surviving Medal of Honor recipient from World War II. And he has devoted, and I mean devoted, a lifetime to continue his efforts for Gold Star families. I didn't know what Gold Star families were, so I had to look it up. Gold Star families are those families. It's an organization, it's a nonprofit that honors and reminds people of those families that have lost a family member in conflict defending our country. In an interview yesterday morning on CBS Sunday morning, when asked if he was proud of the medal, he said, of course I'm proud of it, but I wear it for those that lost their lives. This medal does not belong to me. It belongs to them. They're the ones that sacrificed their lives to make this possible. And he says, they made me realize, I realize what it costs just to have our freedom to be who we are. He set up the Woody Williams Foundation. He's done it in all 50 states. He's traveled, used to travel before COVID over 200 days a year. Why? To make sure our Gold Star family members are not forgotten. When CBS asked if he ever wonders why he's been blessed to live so long, his answer was very simple. Maybe in some small way, I'm making somebody else's life a little better, a little more meaningful. You know, in accordance with a congressional resolution passed in 2000, Americans are asked to pause wherever they are at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. local time for a moment of silence to remember and honor the fallen. To, in Woody's words, to realize what it costs just to have our freedom to be who we are. If this is past Monday, it doesn't matter, or if you miss it on Monday, then do it sometime during the week. Find that moment. Find that moment. This is the way you can make this week even more meaningful. I look forward to talking to you next Monday. In the meantime, live life deliberately.